type things where they they kind of make us giggle a little bit. Um, but the truth is, sometimes they're really close, to, <laughs> painfully close to, to things that we can relate to, and uh, you know we we. We like a little giggle, a little laugh, but <clears throat> when things get too close for comfort, we, we kind of shy away from it, don't we? Well, I came up with some new jokes because there's nothing about rednecks in the scriptures I look, and um, there's nothing there. But today, we're going to be talking about Pharisees a little bit. And, and you know that you might be a Pharisee if. So I came up with some, or uh, read some, and I copied them down, to be honest with you. I didn't come up with these. Uh, Joseph said, you know, you might be a Pharisee if you think every sermon is about everybody else in the church, but not you. <laughs> and you might be a Pharisee if you think only music God listens to was written at least a hundred years ago. You might be a Pharisee if you're sure nobody has ever had to forgive you. So you might be a Pharisee if you think that the world would be a better place if everyone was just like you. And finally, you might be a Pharisee if you go to church to prove you're good. Now, could you relate to any of those? Do you know people who can relate to those? It ain't your job to judge them. So <laughs> you might be a Pharisee if you're judging them. So, uh, but when I hear a scripture like that, when, when the Pharisees come, because the Pharisees were who? The Sadducees had just had their turn at Jesus. If you read the scripture before that, he had shut them down. But the Pharisees were very legalistic. They were very big in adherence to, to tradition and to the written law. Uh, they were very proud, very self-righteous people. They had an arrogance to them. They thought they were better than other people. That was a Pharisee in Jesus' time. Now, do you think any of those things have played forward through the years? Maybe not you, but I'm just saying. Do you think those things have played forward throughout the years. You know, when I heard that and I read that, I was like, you know, they came trying to trap Jesus, but in fact, Jesus had a completely different message for them. They came and asked the question, what's the greatest commandment? I, we got him with this one. You know, he's going to name one, and whatever he names is going to be something else, right? I got it. It's a gotcha question. You ever been asked a gotcha question? Are you all alive out there? <laughs> I'm asking some good questions and nobody's responding. So you ever been asked a gotcha question? You know, one of those things is a trap. And that's what they asked him today. And, 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 you know, a lot of times we come to God seeking answers, but we really, what we're really looking for is the answer that we what? We want. Amen. That's what we, we want to hear God say, yes, do it your way. <laughs> you know, amazing. Your plan was exactly the plan I had for you. You know, those are the things that we want to we want to hear. When in fact, that's probably not the way it's going to work out, is it? Not, usually not, not. Not usually. But that's what they did. They came and they wanted it their way. In essence, they were going to, you know, whatever he, he said, they were going to kind of find a way to twist it into what they wanted to hear. Now, the thing about that is, is that I, as I look at today's church and I look at I reflected on myself because that's a, always a good place to start when you have a question about uh, things being done correctly or things, you know, where can where can the church improve or where can us as a society improve? The first thing you should do is go to the mirror and you should look in there and that's the best place to start. Whoever's standing in that mirror with you. So that's what I did this week. I kind of reflected on that. So then where can I improve who I am? And, and am I a Pharisee? You know, do I feel self-righteous or do I feel uh, like I'm better than somebody else? Or do I portray that to other people? And I certainly hope that I don't because I certainly don't feel that way. I feel that every person in this church is a child of God. And that we're all on equal terms. 
I'm just somebody up here that God called to preach and I was available and I showed up. I said, I'm no better than you. I make mistakes too. And it's okay to say I make a mistake, isn't it? If we didn't make mistakes, there would be no need for Christ to come and die on the cross. I don't come and come to my day and say, yeah, I'm going to make 12 mistakes today. And they're going to be good ones. I'm going to get three in before lunch. Maybe four between lunch and my nap. And then, you know, we'll work out the rest. I, I never start my day that way. But as the day goes on, I do make mistakes. And I hope I learn from them so I don't make that same mistake tomorrow so that, that I can be a better person tomorrow than I was today. Right? But you would be surprised how many, as we, look, as we look at churches, how many churches actually, the people in the church have Pharisee um, mindset more than a Christ mindset. There was a Barna uh, survey done uh, of North American Christian churches, and, and they found that 51% of those polled had Pharisee attitudes about Christianity and only 14% actually had Christ-like attitudes about Christianity. Is that disturbing to you? Yes. Yep. Is that amazing to you? Does that surprise you? No. It doesn't surprise me either. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I've been in both, I've been in all kinds of churches. I really have, and I've seen all kinds of things. And, and we don't have that much time. <laughs> And some are good. Some are really good. And some are really, wow, and I wonder where I'm at, you know, sometimes. And, and, and there's all kinds of people in church, and, and I'm not judging any of you. And when I say this today in this sermon, I want you to reflect on yourself. I'm not asking you to judge or think about, if I say this, who, 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 who comes to mind? What I want you to do is look inside and say, is that me? Is that me? Because you know what? I, I can't change you. And you can't change me, but you can change you, right? And Christ can, God can, the Holy Spirit can change you, but I, I really know there's nothing I can do to change you. So I want you to reflect. I want you to reflect on, on, on these questions that are, that, that are some things that if, if we were modern day Pharisees that we might be saying, you know, uh, some things like, it, you know, if, they, if he knew the Bible as well as I did, his life would be a lot better. Ever said that? I hope not. Do you do you think there's an arrogance there when somebody says that? If I say, you know, you know, uh, Charles, if you knew the Bible like I did, hmm, you'd be you'd be in high cotton, man. You'd be having the time of your life. Is that what what comes across there? Sense of arrogance, doesn't it? Anybody here got a reason to be arrogant? Is Christianity a religion or, or a relationship of arrogance? You can answer that. No? Yes? No? Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. It should be one of humility, right? You know, Christ came to serve. And if we're following Christ-like behavior, then we came to what? To serve. Well, we didn't come. We're here. As Christians, we're here to serve. Let me rephrase that. Right? That's what we're here for. But if you want to be a Pharisee, then you can be arrogant about, I know the Bible. I can recite every, every verse. And you ask me anything, I give you a verse for it. You know? And I don't want you to get me wrong. It's good to read your Bible. And it's good to know what's in there. But when you hit, hold it over somebody's head to make them feel inferior so you can feel better about yourself and your standing in the church, then you're, you're not accomplishing God's mission. You're not. Christ never said, let's beat some people up. Christ never said, get you a big Bible so when you swing it and make an impact. He did say in large print is okay though. Because <laughs> some of us can't, well, never mind. I won't say anything about vision today. But some of us can't. 
What about, have you ever heard this? I'm a follow, I follow rules. I follow rules all the time. Have you ever heard that? You ever said that? How many are rule followers? In, just in general, you follow the rules. In general. In general. <laughs> Not all the time. But in, general, in theory, you follow the rules. You know, there are a lot of people who say, I follow the rules all the time. I don't ever make mistakes. You're a liar. <laughs> I'm going to just call it like I said. You're a liar. Nobody follows the rules all the time. You can try to follow the rules all the time, but nobody follows the rules all the time. <coughs> nobody does. None of us that good. Like I said, if we were that good, we wouldn't need Jesus, would we? None of us good. So don't sit there and say, I follow the rules all the time, because then you're just lying. And people who, uh, when, you, when you try to put that pretense on that you, you know, that, ah, look how good I am, you know, you know, Jesus didn't like that. He called Pharisees, what? Hypocrites, didn't he? He said, you, you, you look all shiny on the outside, but deep inside in your heart, you're not shiny. You're not shiny at all. You got all dirty. You got to get rid of that mess. Right? See, we all got stuff to work on. There's nobody here that's perfect. Pew sits empty every week. Nobody here perfect. We all works in progress. Not to be ashamed about that. I hope God works on me for another hundred years. That means I'm alive, right? But 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 we all are working to get where we want to be, right? Don't have that attitude when you come into people. I'm a rule follower. I don't make mistakes. Because does how do you think that makes other people feel? How do they feel about themselves? Think about that for a minute. Are you lifting them up? Are you encouraging them? Are you bringing glory to God or are you bringing glory to you? Hmm. You see, because every word and every action out of our mouth ought to be something that glorifies God. It's not about how good Kenny can do, because I can do my very best at anything I try. There's always somebody better. <laughs> I mean, it's not a competition. Life's not a competition. It's a journey. It's a journey that we're all on together. We need to help each other. And those who know need to tell those who don't know. And not just in word and in action. We need, we need to be out there and be active in the world. Taking this message outside those doors, let people know that's not what we're about. There's a lot of a lot of things that happens, you know, a lot of things that uh, people say. And you know, one of the things I hear people say is that you know you shouldn't hang out with people like that. Hmm. You shouldn't hang out with people like that. Those sinners. He drinks too much. You shouldn't hang out with him. You know, he he plays cards all the time and is a drinking and a smoking. I even heard him a cussing a few times. You shouldn't hang out with him. What about the drug addicts? You shouldn't hang out with him. What about the pimps and the prostitutes? Those are the people Jesus hung out with. Those were the people in need. Right? Those are the people who need to hear the good news of the gospel. Those are the people that Jesus came to bring into the fold, not push out of the fold. And does your church, does your church do that? If they came in here today, would they be welcome? Or would you do one of these? <laughs> or would you talk about them as soon as they're back returned? You know, you know, stop. Did you see the way he was dressed? God doesn't care. <laughs> There's a secret. God doesn't care what you wear in church. If you want to come in your pajamas, I don't care. God don't care. He, he's just glad you're here. Don't show up in your pajamas <laughs> next week. We can, actually, we, can, we can have a pajama party if y'all want to. We can have a pajama party. 
But God doesn't do that. Some of y'all are picturing that. I'll never get y'all back now. But God wouldn't care. He don't care what you show up. You know, he'd be so glad to have a drug addict in here who needs to hear the gospel. He'd be so glad to have a prostitute in here who needs to hear the gospel. He'd be so glad to have somebody who's broken into a million pieces in here because they need to hear it. But do we welcome them in? Do we welcome them in? Do we let them sit in our seat? You know your seat. The place you sit every day. <coughs> do we let them sit there? I, <laughs> I heard a, the regional minister, the, the regional minister, uh, interim regional minister was talking about, she went to a church, I think down towards the beach and she was down that way and she went into the church and they didn't know who she was and she went in and, and she went to sit, sit up towards the front there was a row of ladies and, and she went to sit there and they said are you a widow? this is the widow's pew can you believe that? that that really happens are you a widow? That, that's amazing to me that's amazing to me this is church everybody. This is for all God's children. Isn't it? You know, we were reading, Pam, Pam brought up a good point. We, you know, we were reading this thing this week about, or listening to this tape, it's called by uh, Bob Goff. It's, it's a, um, Everybody Always is the name of the book. It's a good book. Very good book. It's, um, recommended. Highly recommended reading. But, but anyway, he was talking about circles. He said, it's easy to what? Love the people in your circles. Mm -hmm. He was talking about how we have circles and everybody has a different circle, but it's always easy to love the people in your circle. Right? Because what does Jesus tell us to do? Right? We heard what the Pharisees are doing. But what does Jesus tell us to do? He answers this. I mean, how, how it doesn't get any better than this. What's, what's the best thing to be doing? And what does he say? Love what? Love the Lord your God with what? All your heart, all your soul, all your mind. Love God. And then he said, and, and, and furthermore, love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. I, I mean, I don't know how much clearer he gets than that. Do you? I mean... He says everything hinges on that. He doesn't say everything hinges on, on religion. He says everything hinges on relationship. Because love is relationship. Right? So getting back to the circle thing, because I thought it was really interesting. He said, you know, it's real easy to, to draw a circle. So if we're drawing a circle, and you, and you reflect on this, because I can't answer for you. You're drawing a circle. How big is your circle? If you say, okay, I love... I love God because I'm a Christian and I love God with all my heart, all my mind, my soul. And, and I love, well, my, I love my spouse and I love my children and I love, you know, I love, for the most part, I love all my family. For the most part. Well, some more than others. But I love them. So that's your circle. Okay? Can you agree? Uh, don't raise your hand. Okay? <laughs> man, man. <laughs> I don't know what, you want to know what you're trying to say. But that would be a circle, right? Yes. That'd be one size circle. And you say, okay, I can fit into that circle. I like that circle. I love those people. Like that. That's my circle. And then there's a bigger circle. It says, I love all those people we just mentioned. And I love my coworkers. I love the people we go to church with. I love the guys I go hunting with. I love, you know, the guys who come and help me garden or help me cut my grass or take me to Richmond for the for a, for an eye appointment, I love those guys. Those are those are good guys. I love those guys. And I can live in that circle and I can love those people. That's a bigger circle. Can you love those people? Okay, that's good. Well, I, well, I love all those people. Let's look at the next level. I love all of those people. And you know what? I love that guy that's down on his love. I even love that guy who's who's sitting on the curb trying to pick up a nickel 
or a dime or a dollar or looking for a place to stay or looking for a meal? Or do we judge him and say, you know, if he had just worked a little harder, he never would have been there. Hmm. It's not your place to judge. It's your place to love. Not judge. So do we love those people? Do we love the, the heroin addict? Do we love the pimp and the prostitute? Do we love the sinners? Do we love them? Can we, can we get them in our circle? Do we love the people who are incarcerated? Do we love the people halfway around the world? Can we love them? Can we, can we, get, can we fit them into our circle? Hmm. Might take some work. Right? Might, might take some work. Don't raise your hand. Might take some work for a lot of people. But that would be a good circle, wouldn't it? But let's say we had all those people and I'm going to throw one more in there. The guy who hurt me. Remember? You know that guy that and stole my girl in 10th grade? I've been holding a grudge all that time. Guy that got that promotion I should have had. That guy that double-crossed me in business. That lady that talked about me at the bridge club. You know, those people we don't like. We don't... Can, can we get them into the circle? Can, like Pam said, can you love them for 10 seconds? Start 10 seconds. Don't hate for just, just 10 seconds. If you can do that, can you do another 10? Maybe wait till tomorrow. I don't want you to wear yourself out. <laughs> but, but pace yourself and try to love a little bit more each and every day. Have a plan. To make sure you love them, people. Have a plan to be in the Word. Have a plan to know what God's expectation is for you. To love Him and to love others. You see, if you, if you work at that, if that's all you work at, everything else will fall into place. And you know what? As you expand those circles, as they get bigger and bigger, what, what, is it, what does it end up encompassing? The biggest circle of all the world, right? To be one big circle. I love the world. Because God sent His Son to die for the world, right? Not just America, not just, you know, the areas that we have interest in. Everybody. So we should be loving everybody. Is that easy to do? No. No, there's honest people there. It's not. It's not. And I've had people tell me, I just can't love somebody who's done me wrong. You've got to let it go. You're freeing yourself. You're not freeing them. You're freeing yourself. You're freeing yourself. That's what love does. It frees us. But as I was contemplating this sermon, and I haven't... You know I never read. Anyway, the uh, I had written this sermon and, and I was yesterday I was we were coming home and I was thinking about this sermon and God laid something on my heart and I was like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of crazy. And then He reminded me, you are crazy. I said, okay. And I thought about it, you know, I kind of brushed it aside. And this morning it came right back up to me again. This this is what I want you to do. And one thing I am good, I'm a good listener. And when God lays something on my heart, I feel like I need to do it. Now, this isn't going to work good for you people who are at home watching this on video. But what I'm concerned with right now is the people in this room. Okay? Because to me, to be able to draw out of a well to quench other people's thirst you got to have water in the well, don't you? Yep. you got to have love in your heart, don't you? 